Now in this screencast, we're going to be looking at a more intuitive view of Taylor series expansion. Like why do we use it? What is it good for? So suppose you have a function f and that you only have information about that function at one point, say x0. How would you approximate the value of f at a different point x? Now this happens quite a lot in numerical methods. Let's say you're trying to calculate something numerically and you only know the value of f at one point. Or maybe you could know it at more points, but it actually takes a lot of computational power to calculate f at different points. So all we want to do is approximate the value of f at a slightly different point, let's say x. <laughs> so if we only knew the value of the function f at x0, how would we use that information to approximate the value of f at x? Right? So our known in this case is just f of x0. Right? So we know this point right here. So if all we knew was that point, and we wanted to approximate the value of f at a different point x, the best guess that we could possibly have is that f of x is equal to f of x0. Now that's not a very good approximation. It's really saying that just f doesn't change at all. It's just a constant. So we, what if we could use a little bit more information than just the value of f at x0? What if we also knew the value of the derivative of f at x0? That is the slope. So would that additional information help? So in this case, our knowns are f of x0 and f prime of x0. Again, these are things that you might often encounter when you're, doing, when you're calculating things uh, computationally. Right? So we know our point, f of x0. And we also know what slope we're headed off in as we go towards x. <laughs> so in this case, our best approximation for f evaluated at the point x would just be a continuation of that line. So in that case, f of x is approximately equal to our starting point, f of x0, plus our derivative, our slope, times the amount that x changed. And note the slope is the amount that f changes divided by the amount that x changes. And then when we multiply that by the amount that x changes, we just get the amount that f changes out. So we have a correction to our initial guess, which was actually a very bad initial guess. Now for simplicity's sake, from here on out, I'm just going to call this quantity right here h. Okay, so that's actually a, a really good estimate of what f of x is going to be. Of course, it's going to get worse the further away from x0 that you have to go. right? So this is actually a, a good estimate when h is small. But what would happen, let's say, if we had a little bit more information of f at x0? Let's say maybe the second derivative. So how fast is the slope changing, right? Because in this particular case, maybe the slope is changing and getting more and more increased. Or maybe it's changing and getting more and more decreased, right? So our initial estimate may be off, even if we do use the first derivative information. So in this case, our knowns are f of x0, f prime of x0, and f double prime of x0. So we know where we start at, we know what direction we're headed off in, and we know how fast that direction is changing. So that would be our new estimate of f of x. So in this case, f of x would be approximately equal to our initial estimate plus the correction for knowing which direction we're going off in. Plus another correction for how fast that direction would be changing. Now note, this is just the equation of a parabola. When you know how, what your curvature of your parabola is and what your initial slope is at a certain point. <laughs> Now, of course, this is a better estimate of f of x than, it w than the uh, previous estimate. And of course, the further away you get from x0, in other words, the larger h is, the worse this estimate actually becomes of f of x. And of course, the more derivatives that we keep adding to this equation, the better our estimate will be for larger h. In fact, if 
we have an infinite number of derivatives, then our estimate is going to be infinitely good for any h. And that's why the Taylor series expansion is exactly what the function is if you take out all the terms off to infinity. Now usually, all we care about is actually the um, up to the first derivative term because it becomes a little bit less informative to con continue to try to calculate these second and third and fourth derivative terms. So usually when we do a Taylor series expansion, we really do limit ourselves to these first two terms. <clears throat>